Welcome to the Newsmakers Podcast. I'm Billy Hollowell, and this is a show where we go behind the headlines every day to bring you an interview with a pastor, entertainer, politician, or other notable news figure. And this is a show, again, it's daily, but it's based on our weekly TV show, which is also called Newsmakers. You can watch it on the CBN News Channel and also on our YouTube page. And on this show, every day, we dive deep. It's a little more longer form with one of the people who you will often see on our Newsmakers show or across the CBN News platforms. On today's main thing, filmmakers Stephen and Alex Kendrick join us to talk about their new movie, The Forge, and why they believe it's an important project for the entire church to watch. With no further ado, here are Alex and Stephen Kendrick. So Stephen, tell me, give me an elevator pitch for The Forge. Awesome new movie. Everybody needs to see it. <laughs> if you liked War Room, you're going to love The Forge. How about that? That's so, a good, that's yeah, a good one. Th this one is actually part two, in a sense, because War Room is a call to prayer. And this one is a call to discipleship. And Jesus, when he viewed people, he didn't view them just as a bunch of people who are broken and sinful and he needs to stay away from. He viewed them with incredible compassion and his response was, let's pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into the harvest. And then right after that, he sends his disciples out. War Room was a call to prayer. It was, it was calling the body of Christ to pray. This movie picks up because the same character, same universe, some of them are involved in this movie, but this one focuses in on discipleship. What does it look like to engage someone in relationship, friendship, and teach them how to fall in love with Jesus and walk with him, become a mature believer to the point where they're ready to go out and reach someone else. Okay. That sounds, I mean, that sounds incredible and what's needed right now. For, for you, Alex, when, take us through sort of how you guys landed. You always have an interesting process of how you land where you land on this particular topic. Before going into the forge, we went through a, a, a season of prayer saying, Lord, what direction would you have us go? He pointed us in the direction of discipleship. So reading through scripture, Stephen and I would go through looking at the specific aspects or principles regarding discipleship. Luke 9, 23 just jumps off the page mm -hmm. when Jesus turns around to those that are following him. And he says, if anyone wants to be my disciple, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. So when you start thinking about that, you realize salvation, scripture says, is a gift through faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Discipleship will cost you. So it's not the, necessarily the same thing, me walking as just a believer versus walking as a disciple. A disciple is basically dedicating my life to follow and become more like Jesus, meaning that I have to die to myself. So to deny yourself, take up your cross daily. What's a cross for? A cross is for death. Something may have to die, your habits, hobbies, interests, focus. And so at the end of that whole process, I realized, wow, discipleship, that's a big decision. And Jesus says, count the cost before doing so. And then he throws in there a verse we're all also familiar with. I would rather you be hot or cold, but not lukewarm. So if you're going to follow Jesus Christ, who is worth our full devotion, we can't do it half-heartedly. We can't do it lukewarm. And so this process of discipleship has challenged us as individuals making the movie. We've walked with Jesus a long time, mm -hmm. decades, but diving into discipleship, the Lord's, wow, he kind of takes you deeper, but sometimes it's hard. Convicting maybe. It, yeah, even, it's convicting. Yeah. So, Humbling. so the forge is about the process of someone becoming a disciple. We call it the forge. Things that are um, strengthened, shaped, hardened in a forge, everything happens by heat and pressure. In the movie, there's a sword that's very symbolic of what happens in a forge, and it's given to a young man going through discipleship. And he, he notes, the man giving it to him, this sword was formed in a forge by heat and pressure. Well, when you think about what discipleship does, learning how to die to yourself, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow Jesus, in a sense, it's a spiritual forge. And so this process of discipleship in the movie, uh, a group of men are pouring into a younger group of men on their walk with Jesus. And we specifically follow one named Isaiah. Uh, he's 19. And uh, so he, he learns what that process is. But by the end of the film, he loves, is passionate about his faith in Christ and is ready to pour into someone else. So yeah. it's exciting. No, that is exciting. It's, it's desperately needed. 
I mean, I look at where we are culturally right now and death to self is not a thing that really exists. Like nobody's really interested in that. Why do you think this film right now, you, you tend to always do this. You create something that speaks into what's happening at the time in culture. How does this speak into what's happening in your view? You know, we have to say no to ourselves to say yes to Christ. We're saying, Jesus, I want you to be Lord. I want you to take over the steering wheel of my life, but I don't want to get out of the driver's seat. I want to keep my hand on the wheel at the same time. Jesus said, no man can serve two masters, and we can't serve ourselves and him at the same time. So when we're surrendering our lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, he doesn't make things worse. He makes everything better. Yeah. He's a really good driver. He's a really good Lord. There's nothing better we can do with our lives than to fully surrender it to our creator, the God, the Lord of the universe who loves us, who alone knows the future, who alone can change the human heart. And then as we do that and we let him drive and guide our lives, he will then lead us to love on others, invest in others, and help them learn how to walk with Christ as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Why do you think the church has struggled with discipleship or maybe ignored it? Not every church, obviously, not every pastor, but the reality is it's a problem. We're seeing it play out with church scandals and all these things that are happening. Why do you think we fall into the wayside on that? I think all of us at one point or another will have to deal with the fact that who, who's in control here? We all want salvation and you want, all, all want the blessings of God, but we don't necessarily want to give up control. We want to depend too much on our own logic. Mm -hmm. So going deeper with Jesus means denying yourself and moving your priorities out of the way if they conflict with Scripture or what God's calling you to do and determining I am going to follow the Lord. And God, better than any gym teacher or coach, will allow certain things to stretch you and strengthen you. A good coach is going to add more weight to the barbell at times, add more reps, more laps, more speed to his athletes to condition them and strengthen them. Spiritually, God wants us to grow. He wants us to trust more, to walk more faithfully, uh, to walk in truth and understanding. Initially, we're not ready for the depth that God wants to take us. So following Jesus is a process of trusting him step by step, and he does take us deeper. I'm learning, even at the age of 53, I wasn't ready for certain spiritual understanding in my younger years because I didn't process it well. Today, I'm beginning to understand, wow, Lord, as I pursue you and seek you, you're showing me deeper aspects of Scripture that I'm just now ready to process and obey. And I hate to say that in my 50s, but that's what he's doing. So it's, it's a deepening journey. It's an insightful journey. It's, it's, uh, it's a process of discipleship, and it's hard, but God's revealing more of himself, and it's exciting to walk with him because we all want to bear fruit. So today, our church has to adopt the mindset, yes, I'm saved, but I want to pursue and follow Jesus at a deeper level through discipleship, and that is going to be difficult. There is a, there is a cost, mm -hmm. but it is worth it. He is worth it, and if we want the, the fruitfulness, if we want... Um, uh, more people to come to Christ. Uh, if we want to honor God and glorify Him, we have to we have to count the cost, but say He's worth it. Absolutely, absolutely. Can I answer that question? <laughs> yes, yes. Go for it. Um, Jesus taught the masses on the mountains, and they heard His teaching, but the twelve got to walk away and watch His example. So it went from ears hearing truth to eyes seeing what he was doing. He modeled and lived out all of the messages that he communicated. And so true discipleship is that follow me as I follow Christ relationship where you're close enough with someone where you can model what you're teaching them. So I think in so many churches, pastors are doing a great job communicating the word from pulpits. Yeah. But the people can't raise their hand and ask a question in the middle of the service. Uh, uh, security will carry them out, you know? You have to have more to listen to me instead right. of walk with me. Right, right. And many times he doesn't know what's going on in the marriages and the lives and the families because there's so many people that are in the room. True discipleship means small enough groups and close enough relationships so people can ask the hard questions, they can be held accountable, we can deal with deep issues together, we can take the Word of God and not just deal with general issues, but your specific concerns and needs. So our hope and prayer is that this movie will add help. Our hope and prayer is that this movie will help the body of Christ add those smaller discipleship groups 
into their uh, model of how they're doing church and that people can get back to the place where we're doing what Jesus did and we're able to sit down with people committing to them long term, not just for weeks or eight weeks, you know, but for years even. And as we're praying and walking together and interacting with the scriptures, we're falling in love with the Lord, we're encountering the Lord, we're becoming more like him. Mm -hmm. And then those people are ready to go out and make disciples themselves. Yeah. That's incredible. I mean, and I love that you, you guys make films and projects that encourage the church, right? And this is something you've consistently done, calling the church to a place where the church needs to be. And these are great reminders. This is important, powerful stuff. Now, final question, is it true that Miss Clara Totally different topic script here. No, it's yeah, right. She's coming back. Is this is this accurate? <laughs> Miss Clara is coming back. Okay. She was uh, part of the heart of the movie War Room as an older prayer warrior. People love her. Yeah. Who, yeah, who mentors. Karen Abercrombie. Yeah. Right. Incredible she's actor. Amazing. She yeah. is back. Okay. And she's she... funny and powerful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but again, we did not want to do that um, uh, for any other reason than having that ongoing example of an older prayer warrior pouring into a younger generation because that's an aspect of discipleship. So she is back in the movie. Priscilla Shire comes back. Priscilla Shire plays two characters. Twins. Oh, yeah, wow. Her twin sister oh, that she's talking to. And they interact. The yeah. They interact with each that's other. That's another yeah. level of acting. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So right. we, we're enjoying to, uh, we enjoy doing that. And um, I can't wait for people to see the film. Uh, it's going to be inspirational, but a bit challenging as well. But again, we want to, present discipleship as scripture presents it. And so you'll be left with things that you're processing and digesting, asking yourself, to what degree am I truly devoted to Jesus? But again, ultimately, we want to strengthen the church and help the church go deeper in the Lord. We all need a, a little conviction. It's a good thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, listen, listen, I appreciate you both joining me. As always, it's always wonderful getting to chat with you. Thank you, you Billy. Billy. Thank, Thank you for all you do. That's all for today's Newsmakers podcast. Be sure to tune in for the next episode of the show and also head over to the CBN News YouTube channel and the CBN News channel to watch Newsmakers every week. We'll see you soon.